Reparation Mason is on to something, guys. I have to admit it. He has a strong point. He has a strong point. I was listening to the great A.D. Robles on his YouTube channel, going through Eric Mason's, what he calls a TED Talk, <laughs> talking through the Old Testament of examples, well, kind of examples of reparations, not really reparations, but restitution. Just because they start with two R's doesn't mean that uh, they mean the same thing. And I thought, you know what? He's on to something calling for reparations. But not, not really reparations. I mean, uh, restitution, like biblical restitution. He's on to something. We're going to talk about that today. Welcome to How to Build a Tent. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you for listening to the show, sharing the show, tagging a friend, subscribing on YouTube. I really appreciate it, guys. You are the best. Seriously, I love... Uh, hearing from you guys. I love your support. It just You guys are so faithful and consistent with listening, downloading, subscribing. I'm just so thankful for you guys. Come be part of the conference. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be substantial. There are things in 2020 where we can look back on and think, man, this is a pivotal moment. And I think the conference is going to be that. So don't miss it. Nashville, Tennessee, the first through the third. You got to stay in a tent if you have to stay on the side of a road, I know some people are talking about it. You know who you are about camping. Just do it. Just come. You will, don't want to miss this conference. And most of all, you'll be coming alongside of us. You can support us financially coming alongside of us, but you can also come be part of the conference and physically be part of it, coming alongside of us as we proclaim the Lordship in our worship and our laughter and in our feasting. Don't miss this show. You can email me, Matt, at howtobuildatent.com. Find me on all the social media sites, How to Build a Tent. And just for the record, I really hope this name fits. Every time um, you talk about him on the Twitter, Eric Mason, that is, or on the social media sites, Parlor, if you don't want to be uh, censored, I think we need to start calling him Reparation Mason. Reparation Mason. Eric Mason, the Reparation Mason. I think the name sticks. I think it plays. So he goes off, and it's so funny. I think AD's right, man. He uh, was reading through Leviticus, and he paused. He paused at points where he realized <laughs> that the Bible, the examples he's using for reparations for black people about things that happened a long time ago to people that don't aren't alive anymore for the most part, um, he realized that when the Bible talks about this, that it's specifically tied to individuals and I might add to it, on top of specifically being tied to individuals when we're talking about restitution, which is biblical, reparations, not so much, Re restitution, very much biblical, is not only is it tied to a person, a, a person that was violated and the violator, but also a quantifiable amount. It says in Leviticus, and we'll read it in a second, that you will add one fifth onto it, which means that there's a quantifiable amount of money. You can't put one fifth onto something that you don't have a dollar figure for. And you can't just make that dollar figure up in the air. There has to be a quantifiable amount. And you guys, I wasn't kidding. I think he's onto something here because I think we do have a grievance. Oh, not specifically the black community, although they could be included in this if they pay income taxes. But all people that pay income taxes, white people, brown people, I think we have a case against paying income taxes. Because if you remember our principle before, or our show rather, that when you are being taxed on your income tax, 30%, 40%, 50%, even more if you live in California, that is percentage slavery. That is, if you are getting taxed 50%, which upper tax, upper um, levels of the tax brackets, people are getting taxed that when you bring everything together on the income tax. That means six months out of the year, you're working by force for somebody and not getting paid. By definition, that's slavery. By definition, that's slavery. So we could actually make a case for reparations or what we're really talking about, restitution against the government. Now, let's read this passage. I don't want to take things out of context. I want to actually read what the Bible has to say. So let's read it right now. Leviticus chapter six. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, when a person sins and commits a trespass against the Lord by deceiving his fellow citizen in regard to something held in trust 
or a pledge or something stolen or by extorting something from his fellow citizen or has found something lost and denies it and swears falsely concerning any one of the things that someone might do to sin. When it happens that he sins and he is found guilty, then he must return whatever he had stolen or whatever he had extorted or the thing that he had held in trust or the lost thing that he had found or anything about which he swears falsely, he must restore it in full and add one fifth to it. He must give it to its owner when he is found guilty. Then he must bring his guilt offering to the Lord, a flawless ram from the flock, convertible into silver shekels for a guilt offering to the priest. So the priest will make atonement on his behalf before the Lord, and he will be forgiven for whatever he has done to become guilty. Now, I'm going to say this. There is a bit of a stretch here because this is talking about person to person. And I'm just going to say the government isn't a person, although it represents all of us. And I do think that it, it would not be just, in my personal opinion, for us as individuals to take money from the government because we're really taking money from ourselves and we're in the same situation of redistributing wealth. But we could take that in the form of property that the federal government owns. You see, that is more, not only maybe of a greater asset than what we would receive, but I think that is more of a just thing because why does the federal government own the land in the first place? Why are the federal government dictating to the states what they need to do with their property? It's the state's property. It's not the federal government's property. It doesn't, Californian property doesn't belong to Floridians and Floridians property doesn't belong to Californians. So why does the federal government own these properties or they, you know, they make them national parks or they make them all these national places where you can't build on it and all this stuff, whatever. I don't, I don't want to get into the details of it. So how about this? How about this, guys? Because remember, this is quantifiable. Unlike the social justice warriors who want reparations and they use restitution versus to um, justify it. Have I made that point clear enough yet? Unlike them, we can actually come up with a physical dollar amount because we have receipts, literally tax receipts, and we could take how much money we have paid in income taxes over the span of our lives. Physical people, the people alive, you, me, we could take how much we have paid in slave income tax bet bondage and add one fifth to it, and then get that converted into federal land and have that percentage of the land gifted to us. That way we're not stealing from money anyone else. We are taking federal land that the federal government, not in the individuals through taxes are uh, owning, but just that are owned by the federal government. And we could take back not only our land, but also get rid of this form of slavery of percentage uh, income taxes, which is percentage slavery. And we can actually get close to a biblical model of how we can fix our tax system and how we can restore the lands that the federal government owns, which doesn't mean we own it. We don't get a say over it. We don't get to determine what it is. It's the federal bureaucracy that gets to determine what it is. It's not truly ours. It's the government. And we can take it back that way. I think this has more of a biblical foundation than the Eric Masons of the world, the restitution Masons. Or, I mean, sorry, reparation Masons. Yeah, that sounds better. I'm like, restitution Masons doesn't sound right. Reparation Masons. I think this is a stronger biblical case, and I think it would be just. I think we would be better off as a nation. I think we would be wealthier. Imagine what you could do not only with no longer giving those income taxes away, but also what you could do with that land. So not only would you have land that you would have in addition to that, what you would originally pay to the government to go waste away with whatever they have to be able to build and improve on that property. So Reparation Mason, man, he's on to something. And I think if we actually did this in a biblical way and applied it to unjust ways, remember, they're holding it. They're taking a pledge. They promised to do things with this money for our benefit. 
And they're not. They're spending it. They're wasting it away. They're buying votes. They're paying off donors. They're paying off lobbyists. They are acting like the unjust people that should be punished in this case. Just imagine how much better off we would be. Truly, the fruit of implementing this policy in this case would be fruitful. It would grow our economy. It would grow the citizens' wealth. It would grow our economy. Opposed to the reparations that they want that don't have a dollar figure amount that they have to bend and twist scripture when they're talking about restitution, but they really mean reparations. This is what justice looks like, in my opinion. And I would love to hear your feedback on this. I'd love for you to share the show with your comments. I'd love for you to tag somebody in this. Let's get this idea going. And most of all, let's get that name going. Reparation Mason. We'll talk to you tomorrow. God bless. God bless.